Welcome everybody. I wanted to give an introduction to interior point methods and in particular some of the history and just some of the vocabulary. So interior point methods have been used on nonlinear problems, which are harder than linear problems, since the 1950s. And they were heavily tested without success on linear problems in the 1970s. And the reason why is because we didn't have um, you know, the computational power in the 1970s for interior point methods to shine. Nowadays, interior point methods are comparable with the simplex method, and they're even better than the simplex method on many uh, large problems. But, you know, our computers couldn't handle those large problems back in the 1970s. So we were only testing interior point methods on problems where the simplex method was, was much, much faster. Um, you'll remember that I read some press release a couple of videos ago about the ellipse method. And the next time, you know, that linear programming really made the, you know, the, the headlines of the newspapers was in 1984. And this was when uh, Narendra Karmacher from IBM gave a proof that interior point methods also give polynomial time algorithms on linear problems. Carmacher really advertised the practicality of interior point methods. He probably over advertised the practicality of them. They are comparable with the simplex method. He was trying to say that they're like always better than the simplex method, which is not true, but they're, they're definitely competitive with the simplex method, especially on large problems. Why didn't we know this back in the 1970s? Well, their interior point methods are better on larger problems. And to solve them efficiently, you need powerful routines for sparse systems of equations, um, you know, like Gaussian elimination for sparse systems of equations, um, which now we have very fast routines for. Okay, so I've drawn the picture you should have in mind. We have our polytope of the feasible region and we have our direction factor C that we're trying to optimize. Interior point methods move along the interior, okay? Until at the very end, during sort of a last rounding step, they snap to the boundary to find an exact optimum. So you'll remember in the simplex method that, that we had some trouble sometimes when we walked along the boundary. Um, the boundary can have uh, combinatorial subtleties, right? You can be at a boundary vertex and it's a degenerate boundary vertex and you can get problems like cycling if you're not careful. So the interior point methods avoid the combinatorial difficulties of the boundary and just move along the interior. Sort of the point is that any, any point on the interior in some sense looks like any other point on the interior. You don't have any non-degenerate points on the interior. So it's, it's a nice um, division of how these algorithms are solved. You know, the simplex method walks along the boundary. Interior methods walk along the interior. In the ellipse method, remember the ellipse method, we recast it as just trying to find any feasible solution, not necessarily an optimal one. In the ellipse method, you have these huge ellipses which are bounding your polytope from the outside. And so long as the center of the ellipse is outside the feasible region, you keep going and you find a new smaller ellipse. And as long as the center is outside, you keep going. But eventually you might find an ellipse whose center is inside and then you found your feasible solution, so you're done. Or you take enough steps so that the, you know that the volume of your ellipse has, has gotten small enough so that there's no epsilon ball inside. Okay, questions or comments so far? Quick question, and you probably mentioned this on Tuesday, but I forgot. So what if you, it's computationally the same to find a feasible solution as it is to get an optimal solution. Uh -huh. um, 
my question with the ellipse method. Yeah. So it makes sense finding a feasible solution, but can, do you also use the ellipse method to get the optimal solution? Like yes. is it a similar process? Yes, because you you apply the ellipse method on this um, sort of combination of a primal problem combined with its dual in which there's only one feasible solution and the feasible solution is optimal. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there's, it's sort of like a, there become a lot of auxiliary problems, right? And we just build auxiliary problem upon auxiliary problem. So we're trying to optimize some problem. We did some auxiliary problem that combined the primal with the dual in which any feasible solution is also optimal. So we're solving this auxiliary problem. And then in the ellipse method, you do another auxiliary problem. You know, you sort of um, add this eta vector so that if an optimal solution exists, there's an epsilon ball worth of optimal solutions as well. So we have this like layering of auxiliary problems that appears quite frequently in linear programming I've learned. And it gets a little hard for me to keep track of. Um, okay. So the only other thing I wanna say in this video is that there are different types of interior point methods we'll talk about the central path. We won't talk about the potential reduction method, nor will we talk about the affine scaling method. And for each of these methods, you could consider the primal version, the dual version, the primal dual version, or the self-dual version, okay? So my next video will be about the central path interior method, just the primal formulation. And then the third video today, the last one, will be about the central path method and the uh, primal dual formulation. So to summarize, interior point methods are polynomial time algorithms for linear programs, and they're also quite competitive in practice. Thanks. <laughs>